In the palace of Puddle Brook, there's a green fingered king. His garden is beautiful. From summer through to spring, his fingers aren't green at all. They're just alike. Yours and mine, but he is called King Green Fingers because his plants grow so fine. King Green Fingers was happy. He'd been gardening all day and also keeping an eye on Farmer Blenkinsop's farm while the family were away on holiday. It was evening, and he was sitting with his feet up, reading gardening magazines. Queen Climbing Rose was happy. She'd just finished the ironing and was taking a well-earned snooze. Albert the dog was happy. After a busy day guarding the king's vegetables, he'd been allowed into the palace kitchen and given a bone. He was scrunching away on the mat. Princess Potted Palm was happy. Farmer Blenkinsop's daughter, Belinda, had given her a goldfish to look after while she was on holiday. Potted Palm sat at the table, watching him swim round and round his bowl. The fish was not happy. He looked the saddest fish you have ever seen. What can we do? asked Potted Palm. He looked so sad. Greenfingers peered over his garden as weakly. He needs a bigger bowl. I bet he was put in that bowl as a little fish, and now he has grown into a big fish. He needs a tank, or even a pond. Later on, when the Queen and Princess Potted Palm had gone to bed, King Greenfingers took Albert for a last stroll around the palace grounds. Come on, Albert, he urged. Leave your bone on the mat. Albert growled. <coughs> and clung to his bone. Not every day was he given such a treat. He must find somewhere safe to keep it. Together they checked the orchard, the potting shed and the vegetable garden before taking a last look at Blenkinsop's farm. Looks like being a fine knight, declared the king, turning to Albert at his heels. But Albert was not at his heels. He had disappeared. Albert, called King Greenfingers, where are you? It wasn't like Albert to run off, but it wasn't every day. He had a bone. A scuffling noise made the king look towards the lawn. He could see mud and turf and soil flying in all directions. Greenfingers reached the lawn in time to see Albert digging for all he was worth. By the time Greenfingers caught him, he had dug a massive hole and dropped his bone in the middle of it. Greenfingers crossly marched him back to his kennel. Now stay, he ordered, and strode back to the palace to bed. Albert crawled into his kennel in disgrace and lay with his head on his paws. He only wanted to bury his bone and keep it safe. That night, it rained and rained. The following morning, Princess Potted Palm fed the sad fish before going out to play at splashing in puddles. When she had splashed her way to the palace lawn, she couldn't believe her eyes. In the middle was a deep pond. Somebody has magicked a pond for the sad fish, she squealed. Greenfingers and Albert came to see. The rain had filled the hole that Albert had dug, and indeed, it looked like the perfect pond for the fish. Albert looked a little sad. His bone was at the bottom of the pond. Can we put the fish in now? asked Princess Potted Palm. We must first make sure the pond stays full, said her father. I'll find something to line it with. He fetched a plastic potato sack from the shed and opened it out. Princess Potted Palm scooped all the water away with a bucket, and the king carefully lined the hole with the plastic. They held it in place with a few flat stones, and then filled it up with the hose pipe. When all was ready, Potted Palm fetched the sad fish and carefully plopped him into the pond. Immediately, he looked happy and swam in all directions, exploring his new surroundings. When the Blenkinsops returned from holiday, Belinda was pleased to see her fish looking so happy. She even fetched all the pebbles she'd collected from the beach and arranged them around the edge of the pond. He only needs a friend now, said Potted Palm. Just then, Farmer Blenkinsop popped through the gap in the hedge with a parcel for the king. <laughs> a little present from my halls, he said. Thank you for keeping an eye on things. Greenfingers opened the parcel, and there lay a gnome with a fishing rod. The very thing, he said setting the gnome down at the edge of the pond. A friend for your fish, Belinda. Albert eyed the gnome with interest. Perhaps he was hoping it might fish out his bone. 